Joining me today is my favorite Real Housewife of New Jersey, do not tell the others. One of the most genuinely <laughs> funny people I have ever had the pleasure of spending time with. She is author of one of the most captivating memoirs that I've read in some time, Step Aside Matthew McConaughey. She is also the key holder to the city of Englewood, the powerhouse in pigtails herself, Margaret Josephs, welcome to the middle. Oh, thank you so much, Ashley. I'm so happy we're back together again. I wish we were in person. I know, hopefully soon. I need everything we did that day was so much fun. And now I only eat omelets the way that you ordered that day that we did our shoot. I know we have to be back together at Jackson Hole. That was like the best day together. It was so fun. Okay, so let's talk about the book. It's beautiful, by the way. I know. I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. And that was such a nice. Oh my gosh, so much so. It's called Caviar Dreams Tuna Fish Budget, which is the same name as your podcast. So yes. what came first, the idea for the book or the podcast? Truthfully, I always said Caviar Dreams Tuna Fish Budget. And I knew if I wrote a book, that's what I would title it. And it was perfect for the podcast because that's the way I always live my life. And I love disruptors, anybody who has a dream and follows it anybody who follows their success, whatever it may be. So it was just, it just made sense to have my podcast called that and, and the book. I love it. Okay, so for people who don't know about it yet, give me a brief synopsis of the book without giving anything away. Well, because everybody knows me from the show, but I, I really feel like you only know 25, 30% of my life on the show. And I didn't get on the show until I was 49. So the brief synopsis of the book really is, um, I'm not from the Lucky Sperm Club, raised by a single mother in the 70s, a very unconventional life of um, we raised each other. And how truthfully, I always thought, you know, I would start my own business, working my way through the Garmin Center, facing sexual harassment, a lot of things women faced, things that I had shame about that I never wrote about, never told about, and, and how I dealt with that. Um, my first marriage, a lot of people don't know that I have a natural born son, how I raised my children, how important it was for me to be a mother and how I started my business and, and all the great things that happened to me along the way and all the horrible things that happened to me along the way and how I reinvented myself endless times and really had to do it with a positive outlook and make lemons out of lemonade. And I think that's what makes you so captivating but also lovable and it's, it's such a good read you, you talk you. about so much in this book. And like, like you said, I love how open and honest you were, but was there anything that you were hesitant about including? I think a lot of things, the, you know, some things I didn't even remember. There was a lot of the sexual, I changed everybody's name, first of all. It wasn't to um, say horrible things about the men that did sexually harass me. It was about the feelings that I had and the way women feel because women feel so much shame and you feel like, did I bring it upon myself? Was I too sexy? Was I too flirtatious? And it's that people in power really do have something over um, their subordinates, be it men or women. But at the time it was women and women could never speak up and now we could speak out. So I think I was afraid to say something cause I never obviously said something at the time. I, I was too afraid. I was like, am I going to lose my job? Is someone going to believe me? Are people going to say, well, you know, you looked sexy, you looked pretty. Why didn't you say stuff? You know? So I think I was afraid to say, I never discussed that with my mother. I never discussed it with my children. I never told Joe some of the stories. I never told anybody that story about when I was 12 years old. That, and that part to me, I was like, oh, like, it's, I'm so sorry, first of all, that you went through that, but I think it is Thank important you. that you share it because like you said, it was a different time. And it's so interesting too, because I've heard even my mother and, and when my, my grandmother was alive, the way they talk, like it was just, that was, oh, that's men, that's accepted. And yes. And that so many people went through what you did, unfortunately. And it, it wasn't okay then, it's not okay now. So, it, but the way you did it was in such a classy way. And it just made me so mad on Housewives last, last night. Yes. When, you know, that whole scene, I was like, like blood boiled. So I'm, I'm glad you have it in writing because it's the way you did it is so well and everybody should read it. So thank bravo, you. Bravo, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on a must, much later note, we need to introduce Marge Senior to my mom, Joanne, because they yes. both took us to horror movies at a <laughs> far too young. Age. My mom also had me super young. So she took me to see The Hand That Rocks the Cradle when I was like, oh, that's so scary. Right. When I, 
read about your the exorcist i'm like oh my gosh same thing same situation I, I still have nightmares about the exorcist i get freaked out and i don't like to walk into our basement if it's dark because i always see reagan like you know her head spinning or right. something happening yeah i marge senior i don't know what she was thinking everything was fine whatever oh i'll cover right. her eyes i everything way too much way well, too much but when i read that i told my mom and she goes well that's what i wanted to see i didn't think that you were going to like absorb or remember any of it you were a child <laughs> i know i know so yeah. i made sure not to do that with my kids i was much more protective i was like ah right okay and i also love the way that when you the way you write is the way you talk which is so quick-witted and so funny have you ever thought about improv or like comedy in in an like a staged way I, you know, I was thinking it was so painstaking to write this book because obviously I had a collaborator and I, I like to say it was hard for me because I talk in a rambling way. So I think I'd have to sit there and write, maybe I thought about it before. Um, now that I'm older, it would be funny to do that. I think I might need someone to bounce it off of maybe talking to an audience, but it is true. The last three weeks of doing this book, um, I had to put my voice in it. When I did it with my uh, Emily, who I, I did it with, um, when I edited, it, I had to put the way I speak and the way I did it. And I put so much into it because <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I, I do, I guess, a unique way of speaking. I didn't even know I r really do until everybody tells me that. My husband's like, oh, you didn't know you're funny. You're this, you're that. I go, Joe, I guess I always was like a cartoon character. Well, because it. it's just you. That's your personality. And that's what yes. that's what everybody loves. And I'm so glad that well, we all I'm get so to see glad, it the, the, uh, you know, that my voice comes through. And yes. that's what it was. Like certain things, you know, when I read it, I was like, oh my God, it's so funny. But my kids all, you know, they always say, oh my God, you're TMI. You're this, you're that. Right. No, but I, I, as I'm reading, I hear your voice, right? Like oh, in my head. So yes. Well, I do the audible as well. So oh, yes, everybody should listen yes. to that too. What do you think your fans will be most surprised about learning that you have in the book? I think they're going to be surprised learning a lot about my first marriage because the only thing I really spoke about was, A, I left my husband for the contractor and my two kids that aren't speaking to me because they were so upset. But I do dive into my family a little more about my son, about how I raised my stepkids, about the bond we have and, and what an amazing family we were, about my relationship with my in-laws. I think people are going to be surprised about what a big part of my life that was and that we were together 20 years. Right. Yeah, definitely. And I, yeah, and I, I think a lot of people don't know that, the depth of our relationship. And I don't. I have no, Ill, my ex-husband is one of my best friends in the entire world. I love him. We just weren't a great couple. We were an amazing family. And I always say that and things change and people don't realize that marriage is, should be forever. I understand it, but if it's not, if people are so judgmental. Like I said, I mean, I could win the Pulitzer Prize, cure cancer, but I'm always going to be the cheater. But I people think, are I more judgmental about that than they are about drunk driving, going to jail. It's crazy. Of course, but, but it's nice to, to have it so public that you're so public about it. And like you said, you, you came out day one on housewives, yes. said the situation. And you, I love that so many people saw themselves in you and you know, that's, it's not something that you would think about with a show like Real Housewives in New Jersey, but you, you are your, your role model. And that's, that's, oh, thank how, you. It is, it's really important. Thank um, you so much. But okay, speaking of Housewives, this season is so good. So I want to know, do you watch the episodes as they air or how does that work? I will say I do. Um, I do always watch it the night of because I like to live tweet. I do. I'm going to be honest. I get it only two days before. Okay. <laughs> I only get it two days before, probably because they don't want to totally shock us. So, But I have no idea who's saying anything negative about me. So I'm always shocked myself when I watch the episode and, and sometimes pleasantly surprised, but most times taken aback and appalled. <laughs> so. so then do new arguments and drama, does that mm -hmm. like it, it restarts? Yeah, everything. Every, yeah, it restarts everything. That's why the reunions are so amazing. Right. Because you are so disgusted and mad at everybody. I'm like, I can't believe what you said about me, your confession. I can't believe you said that. It, you know, everybody gets irritated all over again. It's, it's great. But then what's the time? Okay, so I, I'm so interested in the time commitment because you talked about that, how it's, it's not just while you're filming, it's also after. It's while you're 
it's so so how long is filming and then how long between the end of the season and then the or from when you're done filming to the reunion and are you like taking notes <laughs> like you so know if I have a good memory thank god I don't really take I take mental notes because yeah. I'm like oh that that happened but um we haven't filmed reunion yet uh we're going to film reunion very shortly because you know you have to see what's going on on the season and everything else and but we film for like th close to three or four months and then it takes um let me see if I finish November, December, December, it takes about four or five months of editing. Okay. Till okay. after we film, till we go on air, four months of editing. And then when do you start filming the next season? Yeah, I'll be filming the next season soon. Soon, uh, you know, a few months, right? At, right not long after reunion. It's exciting. Can you give me any like inside information about what's coming or maybe what's coming up in this season? Oh, uh, what's coming up in this season? There's more drama to follow. Well, you saw that Jackie and uh, Teresa had squashed it. Yeah. which was which was good thank god right, yeah. but there's just you see you know jennifer and i are still battling and things like that but you see a lot more with melissa and joe you, you know they they teased it a little bit but you see a right. lot about their relationship and there is it's genuine it, it upsets me terribly and we're like it's not true it's not it is true their relationship did have things going on right. during the season and i think every marriage no matter how strong it is struggles with change and i think people are going to relate to that absolutely i can't wait to see i'm so excited yeah that's um, good you mentioned a possible book too in the acknowledgement so is that something you still would consider and if so what would you write about i think marge Singer and i could do an amazing mother daughter book together because her story is so interesting i would love for her to write the beginning uh of the book because she's a hungarian immigrant she went over the border into austria on a bicycle so her childhood story is amazing but it's also about healing because mother daughter relationships are complicated yep and i think a lot of people don't like to discuss it and everyone's like oh your best friend you're this you're that you can be very close, but th but they're complicated. And I think it's a, a lot about healing and making relationships work, and and how and how we did it because we really did raise each other. And I think a lot of people could relate to that. Definitely, I know I did. I mean, it's it, I want my mom to read it because she was a young single mom until she mm -hmm. met my stepdad, who is is my my dad. He's my only dad. Yes. it's just even it, it's funny because like that was the '70s, and I was I was little in the '90s, so it. It's, it's timeless though, that mother daughter it bond. Is. And like a marriage, it is, it's a relationship that you have to grow with together and it's, it's complicated. So I would buy that book 100%. In okay. the meantime, yeah. everyone buy this book, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget, How to Survive in Business and Life. Oh, and I have to thank show you the photo shoot. <laughs> that this is me and Marcia. And this is all in your house, right? That's all in my house. You have to come over. We've done so much work. I get, come over. I will come you anytime. Let me know. I am there. No, it looks, I've just seen photos and your stories on Instagram. It looks incredible. Thanks. We've done a lot of work. Everybody, everybody's going to be so happy because that's how much you, everybody's always telling me, fix your house, fix your house. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, relax, people. It's you're like, done. you're like, you let them into every part and they're yelling at you and you're not. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's a restoration, not a renovation. Right. Um, really quick, what's your Instagram so everybody can follow yes. you? Um, at the real Margaret Josephs on Instagram, or and follow my company, Macbeth Collection, and then my podcast, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. Awesome. And then buy the book. It's amazing. And then we're on tour. We're actually on tour, the virtual book sign. Oh, okay. I was like, are you going places in person? Link in bio. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, you know, set up some own little things in person for sure. Okay. We'll follow along. Margaret, thank you so much. Thanks. It was so good to see you. Thanks so much, Ashley. And Thanks congrats. for having me. Thank you.